no. This is not going to be another one of those videos where I tell you to make some rice water to get your hair to grow waist length overnight. Nah. I'm going to be telling you guys the absolute truth. Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Amen. Hey guys and welcome, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Janet Davies and I'm your hair growth guide. And just a bit of background about me, I've actually managed to be on this natural hair journey for about 10 years. And I know it may not seem like that because shrinkage is what it is. I'll insert some pictures just so you kind of, kind of see where my hair is at because the proof is in the pudding, you know, I've been able to grow hair to an amazing length by the way to God and also through great tips. So now that we've got my resume out of the way, did I mention that I've been on this natural hair journey for 10 years and had waist length twice with one setback? Okay, cool. Let's get into the elephant in the room. A lot of these videos, they be out here telling you to get how to get waist length hair using rice water overnight. In the history of the world, when has that ever happened? Oh, these rice water treatments, they stink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hating on rice water, okay? I'm just having a laugh. Let me tell you the real truth, the absolute utmost truth when it comes to growing waist length hair, growing longer, healthier, stronger hair. So, being the scientist that I am, okay, we're going to do a little bit of maths just because I want it to be clear how waist length hair can actually be grown and how it's impossible to do it overnight unless you have some kind of concoction made in your village in Ni I just don't know. Whatever it is, just keep it over there. But in the real world, our hair grows about half an inch a month, right? So if your hair grows half an inch a month and there's 12 months in a year, that means in about a year, you might see six inches of growth. And if waist length hair is about what 24 inches it would take you six inches a year 24 inches it will take you four years to get to waist length hair provided you haven't had any setbacks no trims nothing nada that's quite unrealistic so let's just add another year it would probably take you about five years i would say to get to your hair growth goals okay this is just putting it into perspective i know you're probably thinking oh, five years oh, five years what can i do now Guys, five years, I think it's, it's a fair minimum. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, like, I want this hair growth now. With that mentality, you're gonna never have the hair growth that you want because you'll probably just be too impatient to maintain your hair. So you might as well just do whatever you want. But if you're serious about growing your hair growth, about getting your hair growth on and making sure that you maintain length and everything like that, definitely watch until the end because I'm gonna be showing you guys not only my journey, but my top tips for maintaining length and getting your hair growth to the best of your genetic capability, okay? In reality, I'm just gonna show you guys my hair growth journey from start to finish. I went natural officially in 2011 and I'll just put some clips. Cue the throwbacks. I also started YouTube in 2014, so if you really feel like it, you can go back and watch my throwbacks, I'll link them in the cards. My hair was so big and long and huge, I was feeling myself. I was definitely adjusting to natural hair life. I didn't know how to style it, so I would just blow it out sometimes, but I was too scared to wear it out. I continued to do protective styles, and in 2015 I straightened this thick hair for the first time. You can tell me nothing. <laughs> I was feeling myself, oh my goodness, my hair had so much body, so much body. And by 2016, my hair grew so long again and heat became my best friend and that was a big error. I would use heat so incredibly often. And in this throwback video, I actually curled straightened hair and yeah, you can see in that video, my hair was like 
crying. By 2017, you can see that my curl pattern loosened a lot, but it was still relatively healthy. My hair got so long, especially when straight. It was literally to my tailbone. Then my hair literally had enough. It had slight heat damage, but then I bought new stronger straighteners and used them on the highest heat and my hair literally was fried. But I'm tired of my heat damage. I'm tired of it. So if you can see, like this side is completely fine, but as you can see, ugh. as you can see, I then began to cut my hair in stages. My first cut was a dramatic failure. Here are some clips. This straight malarkey, so. <gasps> I cut it, oh my God. Comment below what your natural hair setbacks have been and how you have overcome them. If you have, don't worry if you haven't. I would just like to know your struggle could be featured in my next video. So make sure you comment below. In 2018, I suck it all up and I did a big chop of all my dead ends. And I would say definitely cut your hair when you are ready, not when others want you to. It will grow back. <laughs> Still wet. Gosh, this side is shorter. That's all gone. Oh my gosh, it's not the same size. I mean, length. <laughs> what have I done? I was so tired of looking at. No, Janet, what did you just do? <laughs> it's not even. I'm gonna have to cut this side a bit more. Oh, it's gonna be so much easier to like wash and detangle. I don't know what to do. I think I will cut. Oh my gosh, I literally cut my hair off. And it's not the same length. <laughs> it's cute though. I was definitely enjoying my new shortcut and I wore it in these low ponies that had twists in the end. I was deep conditioning literally every single week and putting my hair in these little twists. My hair had grown so much, but I was determined to continue to protective style. Wow, I was determined to continue to protective style, so I continued to wear braids, these low ponies. Sometimes I would blow it out, but very rarely. Still, yeah, continue to just wear these low ponytails. And even gel braids made an appearance, to be honest. But the result of the gel braids were also really nice. But again, I put my hair in protective styles over and over and over again. And by August, I could really see the health of my hair. Look at that texture, come on. But in October, I put my hair back in braids for even more growth as this was the way my hair grew the longest. By December, my hair was getting bigger and bigger. And by January, my hair was the healthiest it has ever been on my natural hair journey. and in March it grew even more. Now my hair is so long, but we are in quarantine, so it's
journey from start to finish, all the throwbacks, all that good stuff. And now that you've made it to this part of the video, I'm gonna be letting you into my top tips for growing out healthy hair, what I've learned in my journey, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna be giving you five amazing tips that will help you in your journey and will allow you to just avoid the pitfalls that I learned in my 10 year journey. If not for that setback, my hair would be to the floor, but it's fine, my hair is, you know, it's healthy, it's, and it's, it's, it's in good shape, so I can't really complain. One of the most important things when it comes to natural Afro hair is, our hair is so dry. It's dry because the natural sebum that would come from your scalp to the ends of your hair, which naturally would moisturize it, can't really do it efficiently because our hair is tangled so much that that natural sebum probably stops like around here and then like gives up. It's like, no, I can't go anymore. <laughs> For a straight hair, you find that their, their hair tends to be a lot oilier because that natural sebum can actually get to the ends of your hair, of their hair really easily, whereas ours, it has a lot to travel. But that's fine, that's fine, we can live with that. So, because our hair is so much more drier, it's also prone to a lot more breakage because it's quite simple, dry hair breaks. So it's really important that as you are on this natural hair journey that you make sure that your hair is moisturized at all costs, okay? No matter what you're doing, make sure your hair is moisturized because it's less likely to break and it will be healthier and stronger. The way in which I absolutely love to moisturize my hair is to not skip deep conditioning. And I know you're probably thinking, oh, deep conditioning, you can't be bothered. But sis, if you're not deep conditioning, basically just forget it. <laughs> you need to be deep conditioning to just really reintroduce that moisture into your hair. And of course, the deep conditioner that I love is from Amino Naturals. It's infused with honey, with watermelon oil, with glycerin. It's got natural humectants which literally grab water from the air and into your hair so it literally stays moisturized for days and deep condition well make sure you have the time to like part your hair make sure that the deep conditioner gets into your hair very well making sure that you use a leave-in conditioner and oil so once you've deep, deep conditioned you want to make sure you follow that up with a leave-in conditioner and with an oil and i will definitely link all the products that i love to use in the description bar so i won't mention them too much in the video but i love of course the leave-in conditioner for a mirror and the hair strengthening oil because it does help to moisture and also to strengthen our hair because our hair tends to be a bit on the fragile side another another really great tip is to keep your hair stretched guys because stretched hair is honestly the best hair when it comes to natural hair if your hair is stretched it prevents it from our worst enemy is naturals which is tangles <laughs> If you allow your hair to shrink up in a wash and go or like a high puff whatever that like those styles look cute don't get me wrong how freaking ever if you allow your hair to shrink up in its natural state and then you try to detangle that bad boy after it's just not gonna happen it's gonna be a mess you're gonna end up breaking off more hair than you need to and it's just a fight that you just don't need to pick so i honestly opt for stretch styles and stretch styles can be braid outs blowouts twist out anything that does not allow your hair to shrink up to its natural state is perfect for maintaining length and preventing those tangles and preventing breakage so guys stretched hair is the best hair simple as that the next point is to detangle with care and this is a point in which i stress about the most because i think above all this is probably the most important because it's literally how you manage your hair your hands or your combs can be the reason you're not seeing any hair growth because your hair is always 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 growing guys if you're not seeing any length retention it's because it's literally breaking off so this is why i stress this point so much if you're gonna detangle your hair never detangle when it's dry always detangle it when it is wet soaked in conditioner using a really good slippery conditioner that allows you to glide through your hair really easy and i always say if you using combs i'm not really a fan of i mainly finger detangle the only time i use a comb is on blown out hair and even then i finger detangle first so i think fingers is best it takes time but guys trust me anything that takes time is normally worth it so 
I know you're probably thinking, oh, do I really have to finger detangle to spend? Trust me, guys. If you're using a really easy, slippery detangling conditioner, it shouldn't take as long. Of course, I love the Tangle Stay from Mineral Naturals. The reviews speak for themselves, guys. So I definitely recommend that you use a really good slippery detangling conditioner to cut that detangling time in half and also protect your hair because if your hair is not growing, guys, it's a lie. It's growing. It's growing. You're just breaking it off. So be very mindful when it comes to using your hands to do finger detangle finger detangle well set out the time to do wash day so that you are actually able to see the results that you want to see okay cool so the next point is to protective style and i would probably rank detangling as the most important and then protective style as the second most important point because i know we love our hair so much and we may want to be wearing it out as much as possible and things like that However, you need to be really mindful that Afro hair tends to be the most fragile in the history of hairs. So we need to put a little bit of TLC when it comes to protecting our hair. So I definitely recommend that anyone who's on their natural hair journey to really opt for protective styles because number one, it prevents you from over manipulating your hair, doing all kinds of things like that. And it just helps you to have your hair in an optimum condition where it's moisturized, it's put away, you may only need to apply like a hair growth oil and it's just left alone and when you take down your hair style whatever it is you will see results because you will not have have had an opportunity to break your hair off but i will say you need to really be careful okay because when you're taking down these protective styles you need to do so with absolute care if you've had like braids in for like four six weeks maybe two months three months you're going to have a lot of build up at the very top of your hair so when you're taking that hair out you need to make sure that you're finger detangling each and every section well you're not adding water because if you add water it will actually cause your hair to mat and then be even harder to detangle so i definitely suggest just softly using your hands to remove any build up and then going in to detangle your hair and do your whole wash day routine so protective style like crazy guys if you're really looking for optimum health and length protection then protective style protective style protective style protective style and detangle with care and the last point which is something that a lot of people don't really take into account when it comes to growing healthier hair because healthy long hair is honestly a reflection of what is inside it's a reflection of a good health good overall health so make sure that you are eating well and looking after yourself because only if you have all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that will supplement the rest of your body will your will your body then prioritize growing out your hair because if you're lacking in any vitamins and minerals and whatever it is you cannot expect your hair to be thriving and blossoming it's just not going to prioritize hair growth over like your lungs for goodness sake so eat well look after yourself drink water be stress free sleep well look after yourself and you will see the results stop stressing about your hair it's always growing you just need to maintain the length so i do hope that that was helpful guys if you have any more top tips definitely comment down below let this be a community where we are all just throwing in our good tips and just helping each other i want this to be a good creative space just for people to just let people know what's been working for them and then you might see something and then be like oh okay i might try that and then you might try it you might love it so yeah definitely comment below guys and i'll see you guys on my next video bye